Hi everyone and welcome to this review note. In this clip we're going to be creating a Windows instance in Amazon Web Services. The thing that's a little bit different from the previous video when we did Linux is I'm approaching this that we've already created uh, some instances before and we've been using the service. Already logged in. Notice that there is a link here to E2C which we've used before. We can quickly go to that instead of going through uh, the wizard approach. I'm going to select this and it will take us into our dashboard for EC2. Uh, I can look at any current instances by selecting on the link here at the side. And the only thing I've got is a previously created instance that I've terminated and has not been uh, actually deleted yet. I'm going to click on the launch instance button and that's going to ask me what OS I want to install. I'm going to scroll down and find uh, server 2016 uh, base image, which is what we're going to work with. Notice that this is all free tier eligible, which means that you don't have to pay a Windows license in order to use this. I'll select that. Again, make sure it is the micro instance so that it's eligible for free, um, which is what we want. I'm not going to worry again about uh, any of these details, but notice things like you can deploy this, you can have it join an Active Directory domain, all kinds of good stuff that you would want to configure on your machine on the fly so that you don't have to do it later. Um, also, we start off with 30 gigabytes of storage, but of course we can modify that if we need to. We're not going to, that's going to be plenty for our purposes. Going to review and launch. We can look down and uh, see what's set up here already. We can modify the security groups now if we want, but I'm gonna wait so I can show you how to change after the fact if you need to. It's going to launch. Uh, now in this case, I'm going to, we can use an existing key pair if we want, but I'm gonna create a new one. And I'll name this something that makes sense for me. I'll download the key pair. Now, something that's kind of interesting in this particular case, you cannot use those keys to log into Windows. What's going to happen is we're going to use those keys to retrieve the administrative password that's automatically configured by Amazon on that particular instance when it's created. So go ahead and launch the instance. Um, that'll take a minute to finish up. I'll just click on View Instances, and we'll be able to see that our state right now is pending, which means it is in the process of starting up. Come back in a second once that's done. While we're waiting for that, we can set up our security group and the name. So I'm going to rename the instance. And within the description tab, I'm going to select the security group link. This is the security group that's attached to my Windows instance. If I select the inbound tab, we can see that right now I have a rule that will allow uh, port 3389, which is the remote desktop port to connect in. And the source is every IP address on the internet, which is not very secure. I'm going to edit. And what I want to do is limit the connection to me. So I'm going to select custom. And in my case, I'm connecting my, from my home office. I'm going to specify my IP, which is going to load up my IP address. I'll put in a description that I'm going to remote connect in from my home office. Save that out. Go back up to our instances and we can see that everything is checked out and this guy is ready to go. Next thing we need to do is retrieve that password so we can get logged in. I'm right click on my instance. You can of course do the same thing from the actions menu if you prefer to do that. Get Windows password. I need to put in that key file that got downloaded, that PEM file, in order to decrypt the password. So if I browse to my downloads, here is that PEM file that got downloaded. I'll select that and decrypt the password. And here's the password that got generated automatically 
for the administrator account on my system. So I'm going to copy that so I can use it a little bit later on. And for instructional purposes, I'm just going to paste that into a uh, text document. Obviously, you never, ever do this in production, but for demonstration purposes, it'll be fine. Close this out, and my instance is now ready to go. All I need to do is create a remote desktop connection into that particular VM. Launch remote desktop. I need to specify what we're going to connect to. I'm going to copy the FQDN from the description tab for the instance. And I'll paste that into the address that we're going to connect. And with respect to the options, I'm going to specify administrator. I'm also going to change this so that I'm connecting over a WAN link so that it's going to give me better performance. And I'll tell it that I wish to, what's my size here? It's full screen's fine. I'll tell it I want to connect. And it wants to know what my password's going to be for the administrator account so I can copy that password and then paste it here. We are now getting a prompt because it's a self-signed certificate. I'll say fine. I'll connect to that. I don't have a problem. And once we've gone through the authentication process, we will be connected into our Windows Server instance up on Amazon Web Services. And we're good to go. So it's pretty much that easy to create and uh, access a Windows instance running up on Amazon Web Services. I'll just log out of this. And the last thing I'll show you is how we get rid of it if we don't want it anymore. And again, you don't want to leave this running in your free account. You'll get to the point where charges are going to start to incur if you run out of the resources included for the free part. All we have to do, right click on the instance, instance state. We can either stop, which will shut down, or we can terminate. And if we terminate, that's going to delete the instance. We get a warning if I select that. Uh, basically stating that all the data is going to be deleted because the disk file is going to be deleted. That's fine. Go ahead and do that. And once this is shut down, then that VM will no longer be accessible to us. And that's pretty much it for setting up, connecting to, and destroying a Windows in instance running in Amazon Web Services. That's a wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you, and we'll see you next time.